Hello everybody, Brian Hansen here with the Bible Animated, and I'm going to be doing a um, relatively quick tutorial uh, for, let me find the video I want here, um, I'm going to be going over how to accomplish this effect in the compositor. Um, basically, just have two different video files, the one on the left and the one on the right, actually they were uh, image sequences. And I'm just throwing these together in the compositor. And I found I had to do a little trick in order to get this to actually work. I don't know why I had to do it. Because one would have thought it would have worked without it. But it didn't. So that's what I'm going to be going over in this tutorial. So basically these two folders right here. Well for DL and DR. Those are the sequences of images for that video. Um, let me just get to the blend file here. Um, that's actually composed of three files. I have, let me find it, 04D, 04DL, that's the underwater portion of the scene, um, as it loads here. Um, basically, I just have some void systems going here, uh, with fish, got a shark in the background there, a fish them in here, um, and yeah, Setup for this for the animation, or not for animation, for the screen resolution is, um, here we go, 512 by 768. Because my final project is 1024 by 768. And I'm doing a split screen. So one half, 512, the other half, 512, put them next to each other, and you got 1024. Uh, let's open the other file then. And so this is the left half of the screen. This next file, when it finally opens, this is the right half. Um, same setup going here. Just a void system with some birds and some clouds in the background, which I got from the uh, Big Buck Bunny production files. And then, where all the magic happens, this is the um, compositing setup. Uh, as you will notice, um, it doesn't do it right. <clears throat> um, and. Yeah, it was an odd thing, and I couldn't figure it out. Um, but then I did discover how to do it, so that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this tutorial. So I'll just start with a new file. Uh, you can actually delete. No, wait, you can't. Um, <coughs> Control Z. Uh, delete the cube and the light. I do need to have my camera. Um, and just because I'm gonna rotate it and put it at zero. Um, if you do render, you'll just get a you know, gray screen. That's okay. Um, I didn't figure out a new way I could use without having a camera so it does appear as if we do need to have the camera but we're not going to be doing anything in the 3D everything will be done in the compositor so you can just close that out um, move all of that and then we will use nodes and let's turn on backdrops as well okay so we have our whoa wow no blender crashed that's not good I haven't had blender crash on me in forever I would figure that, you know, it'd be when I'm making a tutorial that it would crash. Okay, well, obviously there's still some sort of a bug going here. I don't know what, though. It's done the same thing a thousand times before and never crashed. Okay, backdrop use nodes. Okay, and then let's add a viewer node right away. As the viewer node is what it pulls the background image from. Okay, and we have, uh, make sure compositing is turned on here, don't need the alpha turned on, um, I suppose some people would, uh, but in this instance we don't, and ta-da, beautiful gray screen. Okay, so, let's go and add in the image, and just use an input image, and open, and browse to where those are, uh, which is test video is it? Yep. And left and select all with A. And that's a sequence. And what else? I don't know you. No. And yeah, 532 frames here. I don't know you're not. Shut up. No. Uh, okay. So if this would finish, what's going on? Why? There we go. Um, it happens to be a 532 frame animation on this, so we'll do that. Then just duplicate this, 
and we have no you may not I'm busy recording a tutorial here um go ahead and write the other half and tough luck I'm busy okay and this is a sequence as well uh, again 532 frames um check auto refresh on both of these is that'll let us see a <coughs> a preview in the um, background here I don't know why it's pulling an alpha for the viewer node from that because oops this image doesn't have any alpha I mean it does but no alpha to view um and yeah if we, if we have it set to auto refresh there you can jump the frames and it automatically refreshes the image so you can get a better preview of what's going on um it's gonna shrink the background down here with V and then alt to slide it over okay so we have the two background images which are sequences and then we're gonna add another background image <coughs> which will just be a file and that is going to be um, as you saw in my other ones yeah. I had a uh, a whatchamacallit running between them a um, the little bar there running between the two halves to cover where they meet um, yeah where did I have that file um, give me a second here we go beam okay so we have the beam and I'm actually gonna scale the beam down oops I didn't want to duplicate because uh, I noticed that the beam looked too thick when I put it in to the final composite so to scale it just use distort and scale and if it would let me grab the scale node and pop that right in there um, I've actually scaled it really huge and that's what I want to do I want to make it smaller okay and then to uh, layering all this stuff together now one would think oh somebody messed that up one would think that you could do it rather simply by just using um, well using a color and a mix node because neither of these are going to be going over each other so you know, put one there put one here throw it into the viewer uh, back of one and I'll say well that doesn't work at all and that's absolutely right it doesn't but we would have to use another distort node and offset it um, with translate and we want to move this on the X um, if the total image width is set up at 1024 and these images are both 512 I think we have to go at half of 512 256 for the offsets I believe um, I could be wrong on that let's see what happens okay. oh and this one we'd have to set to negative 256 um, okay, we would have to, uh, do something different. Uh, but I don't, there we go. I have to include the alpha of the second channel. Interesting. Okay, but yeah, as you'll notice, I'll just render this out. It'll, oh, I didn't put that into the composite, that's fine. If we do that and render this, it doesn't work which is odd because it should but what you have to do is use that camera which uses nothing and toss in some alpha over nodes do, 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 do. alpha over and we want to use that one translated alpha over it then mix it and I guess we only have to do that on one of them I guess we just have to do that on one uh, for some odd reason what Blender seems to do is it'll take the image size of your input image and render that size but then it puts black behind the rest of it for whatever strange reason and so we got the um, the 512 pixels wide with 256 pixels of black on each side which we didn't want so we just have to use the camera layer or the render layer and that's why I said you have to have camera but you don't need anything because you don't see that anyways so rather than put something there which it will have to render and take more time just leave it blank it'll render it and then you have to use the alpha over node here and that lets blender know you actually want to use the whole 1024 pixels or whatever your image width happens to be 
and uh, then it won't work. So basically, that's all there is to it. Um, pretty simple. Uh, took me a while to figure it out, though, which is why I thought I would uh, make a tutorial so you guys wouldn't have to uh, scratch your heads trying to figure out how in the world this works. Um, and yeah, as you can see here, it's not it's not really all that complicated. I have very few nodes. I mean, this is actually more less, I should say. <laughs> There's less nodes than I actually have in the file. So I did something different in the uh, in the file I'm using. So I'm actually going to go open that file up and see what I did different here. Um, I think I just okay. I just did two alpha overs. Um, I did the first alpha over here. I'll have to render that so it gets the right image size. I used the first alpha over here, and then I used another alpha over to throw both halves together instead of using a mix. So I think that's the only difference I did. Um, Oh, and then of course I had to put in that bar, which I didn't have in the other file. The, uh, oops. The bar that we see in the center there to split the two up. But that's all there is to it. And then um, you just use your render output like you normally would, make sure you have compositing checked. And it'll. Yeah, it's not fast enough to actually do this on the fly as the animation. But, um, like we saw in that original video. So let me you get that video back here. Um, you can mix your two halves together and get a split screen effect. Now this probably also could be achieved using the video sequence editor and using scene strips. Um, which what you would end up doing is, let me just quick pull this up, we would add a scene, so we'd actually have to create both scenes. Um, within the file and then have the width set funny and that might actually not work camera override blah 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 yeah I guess if we use a camera in each scene um, I'd give them different names just to play it safe um, and did 512 each we'd probably have to use there's a transform yeah, I don't know what a transform no, uh, thing here does at all. By linear position. Yeah, so it looks like you could probably uh, reposition both of them. One to, uh, what would it be? Negative 256. Whoops. Negative 256. I have no idea where that is, though. But that might work, too. But um, I think it's easier using the compositing nodes because then. You render each of the halves as their own strips first, and you could do it as an, a video file. It doesn't have to be a sequence of PNGs or JPEGs. Either way will work. But then, if you do have errors in one, like I noticed, there's some mistakes with my fish in this scene. Instead of having to go back and re-render both halves, I only have to go back and render the fish. Um, you'll notice, or maybe you won't, because I might not be able to find it. But there is some weird sporadic fish that just appear and disappear and fly all over the place in that half yeah I'm not actually seeing that right now but it is there and uh, yeah I can just re-render those frames if need be and then find the matching frames in the folder that has the sequence and drop them in uh, which could be slightly difficult but I don't have to render both halves and with this file it really wouldn't be a big deal to render both halves because the clouds here, those are all just planes with an image on them. This half here takes like two seconds to render each frame. This one, there's a bit more. You got some mist in the depth background. You got a lot of particle systems, the voids. Um, that one probably takes more like seven or eight seconds a frame. Still not really a huge deal, but if you had a complex scene, you know, where each frame's taking like two minutes, you wouldn't want to have to re-render both halves and take four minutes when you could just use two minutes and render one half. So... It just makes this method simpler and easier. So there you have it. That's the uh, completed tutorial. Uh, hopefully it was useful. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully um, it saved you from a bit of 
a bit of heartache and a bit of trouble and saved you some time. So thanks for watching and God bless.